Hey. <laughs> I'm Gary. I'm Lisa. Welcome to us. Our and, real estate uh, update of the day. Uh, that's right. Our top story today is homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance. When's the last time you actually read your policy? And what questions do you have about homeowner's insurance? Well, spring clean and check your homeowner's policy. That's right. So what does homeowner's insurance cover? Well, what's the number one thing you think of about your homeowner's insurance? It covers the property. It covers property damage. So that's the first thing. So if your house itself or any other structures on the property get damaged, that is property damage. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Does it matter how it gets damaged? It does matter how it gets damaged. So not everything is, is covered. If it's uh, like lack of maintenance type things, those aren't covered. Uh, but if it's fire or flood or things like that, then generally they are covered depending what kind of coverage you have. Well, fire, probably not flood. Flood, flood only if you're carrying flood. Yes, yes. <laughs> flood, you have to have flood to, to be covered for flood. That's right. So the number two thing that the homeowner's insurance covers is personal property loss. Yes, and that would be your personal property is what's inside the property. So things like your, your furniture or things like that are personal pro uh, property versus the property damage. Yeah, TV, stereos, computers, that kind of thing would be covered under your homeowner's insurance under a normal policy. That's right. The third thing is your personal liability. So things like if your dog bites somebody, things that happen on your property that are going to be your responsibility that aren't um, property or personal property related, they're going to be covered under your liability portion. That's right, and I would think that the dog coverage gets a lot of activity. Yes, we story. will get to that. It is on the top <laughs> list. That's why I put it in there. Um, the other thing it would cover is if you have to be out of your property for um, re repairs, your insurance policy will possibly cover some or all of your additional living costs. And let's say if they found a toxic black mold in your property and you couldn't live in there, you got to live somewhere where they're remediating your house. So homeowners insurance typically would cover that. Right. Up to, of course, all your maximums. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then the four, I thought the four most common uh, insurance claims that you guys might find it, uh, interesting. Number one, what do you think number one is? Number one is hail and wind. Number one claim. Number two would be water damage and freezing pipes. Yes, and I'm sure we have a whole bunch <laughs> of new claims in Texas where the freezing cold ran through that part of the country that's not usually. So they're getting a whole bunch of new insurance claims for freezing pipes. <laughs> yes. But that's number two. Number three is theft. Of course, things get stolen. Number three is theft. Number four. Fire and lightning. Fire and lightning. So, of course, we are very, very aware, keenly aware of fire, since we had the fires rip through here, our county, two separate fires a year apart. So we are keenly aware of that, and uh, it has made homeowners insurance in some locations difficult to get um, or expensive to get after the fires here. Yes, there were several companies that actually pulled out of California after the latest rounds of fires. Yep. So, yeah, yes, very difficult if you're in a fire zone area. And it's, you know if you're there or not, I would think. But very well to check yes. on your insurance before you close your real estate transaction, which we would recommend that to anybody that does business with us. Of course. So your property coverage has three prongs to your property coverage. Number one is replacement cost. That means that the insurance company is going to pay to replace the item. That's replacement cost versus the actual cash value cost. So that is the actual cash value would be if you have a 10 year old refrigerator in your house that burned down, they're going to give you the, the equal cash value of a 10 year old refrigerator, not a new one. Yeah, they might even go out and find one for you. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Uh... I just threw that in there. <laughs> and the third one is the extended replacement cost. So if you have things and you're carrying uh, riders and things, there are some areas that might have extended coverage with them. Yes, and like Lisa said, this is our spring checkup, so very important to check on your insurance coverage. The cost of houses has absolutely skyrocketed in the last 18 months. That's right, so make, just make sure that you are checked your policy 
um, and be sure that everything is up to date and you have all the coverage you need uh, and especially the replacement costs. Um, and then I thought the umbrella coverage, which you should all have an umbrella policy too for liability, because again that covers you beyond your basic coverages. And like I mentioned before, the number one, um, there's four, I put the four top homeowners claims here on my list. So, um, you, so you got, wait a minute, you got your insurance policy and then you got an umbrella insurance policy that covers over on top of that. So it covers basically everything. So go right. ahead, now what's the number one it thing? It covers more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, dog bites. Average dog bite claim is $30,000. So make sure you have your umbrella policy if you have a dog. <laughs> yes, the dogs can sometimes, you know, they're dogs. You never yeah. know when they're going to bite. They may be just totally docile the whole time. They see the wrong person at the wrong time. They touch them the wrong way. Dog bite. That's right. Number two is fallen trees. Now fallen trees may or may not be, co be covered if a tree falls down because it's been neglected and it's full of beetles or something. It may or may not be, co be covered. I mean, it won't be covered. If it falls down and hits your house and goes through your house, probably going to be covered. <laughs> <laughs> or goes through your neighbor's house. Right, or through your neighbor's house is even worse. So yes, make sure, again, your policies are up to date. Um, the third most common homeowner's claim is for hired health injuries. So your housekeeper or your gardener um, slips and falls or the gardener, you know, twists his ankle in the garden or something, falls off the curb, uh, you want to be covered for that. Yes, you do. Usually, you know, contractors that come into your house to do repairs, they usually have their own coverage because they're licensed, bonded, insured. But a lot of times, somebody that comes in to clean your house or a gardener, you know, maybe it's a neighbor or something like that they're not going to have their own insurance, so they would rely on your insurance to get the claim paid. That's right. And the fourth most common homeowner's claim that I was surprised by, and the reason I put it on the list here, because you probably won't know either, is intoxicated guests. That you are liable for intoxicated guests, not only for the property damage they might cause, but also if they cause any bodily injury to another guest, you are liable. So I... Well, didn't know that, <laughs> That's okay. but now we know. <laughs> so if you're having a party, you're doing tequila shots, and somebody, two people get in a fight, you're liable. Uh huh. It's at your house. So <laughs> yeah, break that fight up. Don't don't let that fight start. Yeah, make sure you keep your guests calm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stay calm and take it outdoors, right? <laughs> oh, and so in dish, um, an, an additional endorsements like we mentioned, um, earthquake insurance would be additional. Flood insurance is additional. You may, it may or may not be required on the property, so definitely look into that. You would know if you're in a home and it, and it requires flood insurance. You would probably know that already. But like we just have one in escrow right now that they changed the flood maps on January 21st, and now this property is in the flood zone. So things do change and things, so just make sure you know what's happening around your property. That's right, and they don't always get those flood maps right. So your property could be in a flood map zone and it's not in the floodplain. So, very difficult to push back, but people are pushing back on the new maps right now. Yep, for sure. Uh, the sewer ba uh, backup, you can get a sewer backup if the sewer backs up into your house. Uh, that's also a specialty coverage. And then jewelry and personal property. So if you have expensive computers or expensive cameras, uh, then you wanna make sure that those are called out and insured so that if anything happened, you can get them replaced. Yes, they call those insurance writers. So if you have, let's say, wedding rings or expensive jewelry, anything that's expensive, you want to make sure that that's called out separately in your homeowner's insurance policy. That's right. So we always, always encourage you to talk to an insurance broker. And what does that mean? That means that that insurance agent has access to more than one carrier. So just like we always encourage our clients to get pre-qualified with, with a mortgage broker, that means they have access to more than one supplier. So if you go with your bank, like B of A or Chase or Wells Fargo or any of the big banks, they can only sell you home mortgages that fit into their product line. Whereas a, a mortgage broker can shop out depending on your needs. So same with insurance, we always re recommend you shop with a broker who can see your specific individual needs and shop that to multiple carriers and get you the best coverage for the lowest amount of money. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the best coverage at the cheapest price. And I, I mean, we're under the guys that you should check out everybody. 
I mean, you know, let everybody give you a quote. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain, but you're going to be ending up reading a lot of fine print. All right, so on that note, I talked to our insurance broker and asked him what are the top um, recommendations and tips that he had, and he said these are his four tips. Number one, um, insure to the full value of reconstruction costs. That's been very important, especially lately that we've lost a lot of homes to fire. So uh, you should have at least $200 a square foot in replacement cost. We would probably recommend more than that, but at least that. And you'd be surprised when you look at your replacement costs on your homeowner's policy. I'll bet you have less than $200 a foot. So if you do, you definitely want to up that. Because if you actually like having countertops in your kitchen, uh, you're going to want to have more coverage. <laughs> Well, it's like when the Thomas fire swept through a couple of years, three years ago. A lot of people have been in their homes 20 and 30 years and had the same policy, but had never done the spring checkup and increased their coverages. So a lot of people lost their homes and then come to find out their home owner's insurance that they were carrying was not even close to replacing the cost of what it's going to cost to rebuild. That's right. That's right. Um, now, uh, the number two was extended replacement cost endorsement because you never know, like you just said, you may be underinsured for that time and you haven't checked your, your policy, but you want to have the max extended replacement cost endorsement you can have, and that's usually 50%, so you definitely want that one. And then you also want the building ordinance, you want to get the max on that, which is again another 50% um, of value, so you want that one too. And then the... Um, Last one is to keep your property deductible as high as you can. So around $2,500 is what he recommends. If you can uh, then pay everything that's less than $2,500 yourself, if you have small things that need to be done, and then save your insurance for when it's more than that. Yes, because you will save money. The higher your deductible, the cheaper your policy is ultimately going to be. Right. And then the number one thing, make sure you have at least a million dollar liability umbrella policy on top of your regular insurance. So like Gary said, you have your regular insurance. This is just the umbrella policy that covers it all up to a million dollars minimum. Yes, and I think when you check on the rates on that, you're going to find out that it doesn't cost that much more, let's say, to go to a million to two million, and then, you know, five, ten million is not uncommon these days just depends what your situation is and every situation is different so just a reminder to not only to check your smoke detectors when you spring forward but to check your homeowners insurance and make sure that it's up to date and covers your current needs because your needs might have changed too maybe you had a baby maybe you got a new car maybe you got rid of a car maybe you mean maybe you bought some new electric bikes that you don't have covered on your policy Make sure that all those things are covered on your homeowner's policy. So do your spring cleaning. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, guys. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.